Hey, what's going on, guys? Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking out the channel. Much appreciated. If you guys could subscribe here, subscribe to the Tobin and Leroy Show on your podcast platforms, and you guys could go watch us every single day, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the WQAM YouTube page. That would mean a lot to me. Join in on the silly sauce, everybody. You know, we were just trying to have, you know, I, I, I'll be real with you. You know, on our show, I think, and as you guys know, you tune into this you little little shindig here. You know me. I, I like to look at the lighter sides of things. I'm not a, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a serious hot taker. I, I delve in time to time. Sometimes things fire me up. You know, uh, you know, Damian Lillard and that whole NBA statement that pissed me off. Things will piss me off from time to time. A lot of the two of phonies out there uh, piss me off from time to time. But like, I'm not going to just bubble up outrage out of nowhere. It's not typically my style. I will usually try and find funny stuff in uh in the in the sports landscape of things that's just how i like to do it you know i just think it's a much more enjoyable experience but i saw something today uh on espn and i i don't even really i I don't even understand where the rage is coming from for one of the best of the game you know stephen a smith is a is a very entertaining personality like him hate him guys had a lot of success but, you know, sometimes when you're just trying to, like, where can I find the lane here? Where can I find the take on this? And then Stephen A. Smith is just giving takes at all points at all the time. So if you guys have been watching the last couple of days or listening to Miami Dolphins media availabilities the last couple of days, uh, there was just some fun stuff. One of the fun storylines, I think, going into this year, because there's not a lot of – there's pressure on the Dolphins, but there's also – there's a lot – I do feel like there's a, a little bit more at ease with the Dolphins this year because – the Dolphins know who the corner quarterback is. They know who their coach is. We all have the the same characters are kind of all back, except for like Vic Fangio. One of the only ones that wasn't was Jalen Ramsey. Now he's hurt. Getting us to know some of the rookies. You know, Cam Smith flashing. Devon A. Chain we're excited about. Um, uh, it was this one dude, Chris Brooks from uh, BYU today. Had like a 95-yard touchdown run. So like we're getting to know some new guys, but mostly – the main players are the main players. To Ron Armstead today speaking, he's uh, back on the practice field with his team. That's great news. So it's just been a little bit more relaxed. And one of the fun storylines has been uh, on a, on what was a scary thing last year was, you know, Tua got concussions. What can he do to try and prevent this? Yes, he is apparently going to do on some new helmet, but also Tua's taking jujitsu. I dig this as a person who is a fan of mixed martial arts. I, you guys know this. I interview a lot of these guys. I interview a lot of them who are Dolphins fans. Gilbert Burns, Jorge Masvidal. I've talked to Max Holloway about Tua taking jiu-jitsu. I've talked to a lot of people in the mixed martial arts game. They all think this is a badass idea. They think this is cool. I, you know, And I kind of get it on its face. I have a, a son who is in BJJ. I was telling him about the Dolphins quarterback. He thought it was badass because Tua is trying to do this whole brace fall thing to uh, to avoid hits. And it's a big part of the sport. It's a big part of, of, of avoiding you know, getting your head hurt, tucking yourself, bracing yourself, and all these repetitious things that he's trying to do. So Mike McDaniel was asked about it. Hey, how's the whole jujitsu thing going? You know, where where, where are we at with things? And Mike McDaniel is, as Mike McDaniel is, a bit of an oversharer. He's got things to say about things. And he was talking about Tua doing jujitsu. And one of the things that he revealed was that Tua in OTAs actually kind of utilized this by doing a backward somersault. You know, with uh, Coach Paloka and and Kyle Johnston and how they, um, you know, vetted whoever um, the master of jiu-jitsu would be, I, I, I think it, it was really cool um, from an organizational standpoint and from Tua's standpoint, um, and I feel great about uh the re- results we don't we've only had one time in camp so far in live action that it was in OTAs actually in OTAs he he got I think he got stepped on and he fell down backwards and completed a backwards somersault it's pretty sweet a little backwards somersault a little backwards roll you know some people took this and said it was a back flip I know Tua had to like shoot down today because it's like the legend of Tua it's like whenever there's something uh, you, you know, people are saying, oh, two was out there. He's doing a backflip. Like he's just engaged you off the, uh, off of the, uh, off the top of the cage, you know? No, I mean, it's like, it's one of the, the, the up things you do. You do a little front roll. You, you, you kind of tuck your head, you're avoiding the hit. And then they do it on the backward side of things 
where they are break falling into a roll. You know, so I was like, I was like, oh, that's pretty. That's a cool thing. You know, that's that's. Uh, so those are like, those are some some. You know, pretty early skills that do seem like they are kind of going out there. Tua commented on this. Yeah. So let me give you context. I did not backflip. No, did not backflip. I got hit from someone in the front of me. I have no idea who it was, but I sort of hit a little somersault going backwards and I flipped backwards. No backflips over here though. But I think to, to that, it, it was cool to see because now in a weird way, it's, it's like the quarterback room cheers when we, when we start to do that. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that we're doing jujitsu falls, but it, it's, it's hard to gauge that because that was the first time I've done it. And it, it's hard to gauge it because they, these guys on the opposite side of the ball got to stay away from the quarterback and no one can really touch me. So the only time you can really put that to use is in a real, real live situation game. Which is a cool thing, you know, and, and the Dolphins have been trying to make this like an element through this year. Obviously, you want to keep Tua happy, but also like they, you know, how can we prepare people in this situation especially for a position that doesn't get touched you know it's one of the big things, oh, how many sacks do you have during the pre oh that counts as a sack when there's no pads on especially oh that counts as like that there was one where what did they say there was a 12 sack game uh practice so far ah well it was it there was uh some quibbling on what was it a, was it a true sack was it not a true sack whatever but the point is the dolphins qbs and especially to uh, you can't really replicate this uh ferocity uh, and practice in practice getting hit the only time he's really going to be able to practice it is in preseason and who knows how many snaps they're going to give him so two is doing this cool thing he's learning jujitsu you know people think people who are you know jujitsu experts that i've spoken with world champions they think this is a badass idea you know i, I think everybody kind of just says, ah, this is fun right like i, I think if, unless you're you know, a curmudgeon. I think like Shannon Sharp made for, oh, you don't know how to fall. B -b -b you know, like I, I get it. You want to sit here and you want to be like, oh, let's let's just rip on everything, whatever. But Stephen A. Smith really took a swerve today. And he was really, really pissed at Mike McDaniel. And Mike McDaniel having anything to say about Tua. And they were going off of this story that Tua had done the backwards roll. They would play this clip on first take. And like Stephen A. Smith was just disgusted with Mike McDaniel. And he's like, he's like disparaging his character saying that he doesn't want to hear anything that he's basically like, uh, he's implying phoniness because he put two in danger last year. Here's the clip from first take. I don't want to be excessive because I'm serious and I'm not joking. I don't like listening to this man. I have an attitude when I hear him speak because it's unconscionable how you let to a tongue of a lower on that field against the Cincinnati Bengals last year after watching him be concussed in that game Sunday. I don't give a damn what he says. He has, I, I, I mean, I'm talking about in terms of the veracity of the words coming out of his mouth. I just don't believe a damn thing he says with, uh, with sincerity. And, and I, and listen, if I looked, if I saw him in his face, I'd be like, I apologize, but that's just how I feel about him. And I'd, I'd look him dead in his face yeah. and that's how I feel about you, sir, because we all watched Tour on that Sunday against Buffalo. And we all watched how discombobulated he was. And to literally sit there and know what concussion protocol is, and it's a minimum of six days, and you got to be evaluated and stuff like that. And then to have him out on that field, it almost got him killed, man. And he had to get carted off and hospitalized and all of this other stuff. And then he comes back weeks later, and then we find out, after another game, he's concussed that following Monday. Nobody noticed it while it was on the field and they were playing. But suddenly the next day, we're going to find out he's concussed and he can't go. And this man comes up with every explanation under the sun. So I don't give a damn about martial arts classes and you learning how to fall and all of this other stuff. Not from him. If two are saying it, I'm down for it. I got it. If, if your martial arts teacher is saying it, I'm down for it. But I don't want to hear from their coach. Here's a couple of things that I find weird about this. Okay, let's let's break this down. One, uh, he doesn't like the way he doesn't want to hear anything that's coming out of his mouth. I find this funny for a couple of reasons. One, it's your show. Like Stephen A. Smith has been very strong on uh, uh, that is his show. He controls it. All that you don't have to play Mike McDaniel 
talking about to his jujitsu. I don't really know what he's saying out there that could be lent as phony. You know, like, okay, if he was, let's just say he was talking about uh, Tua's health or Tua about, maybe I could find the connect the dots here. He's talking about uh, a simple thing that happened about Tua. He was answering a specific question about Tua taking jujitsu. And Mike McDaniel, one of the things I find, one of the things I do appreciate him about him as a media member is that if anything, Sometimes the guy's too too honest. He he's an oversharer. And you know, like I feel like he'd want to be honest on everything. He almost I feel like has to train himself not to lie. That's how much of an oversharer he is with this type of stuff. Um, you know, and, and like even with it when it came down to it, like when people would ask about like the Byron Jones thing, like he's like, I don't even know why you're you know I'm not gonna be able to give you anything on that. So like why are we even asking? You know, like that's that's genuinely how I, I interpret the guy as opposed to other football coaches who I do feel like will just boldface lie to your face and, you know, go out of their way to say nothing. I feel like Mike McDaniel goes out of his way to say everything. He just he's an over talker when it comes to this type of stuff. And with with Stephen A. Smith is is going out here. The thing that I find crazy about this with all of this is that anybody in the mainstream media would have the audacity to imply that they think they care or have more concern for Tua than Mike McDaniel does like a guy who genuinely has a relationship, a friendship with his quarterback, who is there, who was the guy who built up his confidence, a guy who said that he was, you know, spiritually broken in the game, was looking himself in a mirror and say, I don't even know if I'm good at this. Do I suck? He's talking about all this stuff. And Mike McDaniel did everything in his power, hours of footage, working on what two is good at, how they can execute, how they can get this guy to the best of his ability, doing everything a coach can do. You're trying to act like or, or paint it on your platform, which is very big, that this man doesn't, this man is a phony. You're implying this man is a phony and has no care for Tua, or that you don't think that his words mean anything because you think he's a neurologist. Because, as we remember from that Buffalo Bills game, no concussion was diagnosed, a back injury was. Say with it what you will. Tua did come out. He did ball out in that second half after coming out. The Dolphins did win that game. So, again, Mike McDaniel is supposed to be more qualified than neurologists, and doctors, and protocol, and all this stuff. Was it a super unfortunate thing and a super bad thing that happened to Tua on Thursday Night Football? Yeah, man. But people out here who were like, oh, the Dolphins, people were saying things like, oh, they should be you know, try, they too should sue, Tua should never trust the Dolphins again, all this stuff. Look, coaches do have to protect players from themselves in certain situations, yes, but also coaches don't know more than doctors. They don't. And if you really think that Mike McDaniel doesn't have a genuine care for Tua to the point where you don't want to hear from him on your show, even though you played him on your show, uh, he wasn't, he, you know, he did not call, he did not phone in he did not call in like it's WFAN. He did not call in like it's a Stephen A. Smith podcast. He was It was a clip you guys played, your producers played for you. Um, but the idea that people think that they have, this is the other part that he said. He's like, um, I have had people reach out to me and say they're concerned about Tua. I don't believe, I'm not questioning the man's football knowledge. I'm not questioning the fact that he's a damn good football coach, yeah. it appears to be. But when he starts talking about other things, sort of elevating our level of confidence and assurances as to the health of a player and what he's learning, my response is for him to shut the hell up and just coach the team. We don't believe what you say. Because after what yeah. happened to your quarterback last year, Tua Tungvaloa was concussed four times last year. Four times. Yep. All I'm looking at is See, I'm mate, praying me... that the brother's healthy. And by the way, last thing, I interviewed Nick Saban mm -hmm. on my podcast months ago. Nick Saban was worried about Tua, along with yeah, various yeah. others that I know have, that, that played with Tua at Alabama. All of them are worried, but, but the coach is going to sit there assured. Just shut up and coach the team. Oh, yeah. Who could forget Nick Saban, who's got a heart of gold? I mean, pretty like this is, you know, I, I – I, you know, maybe speaking out of turn here, but Nick Saban, I'm pretty sure that Nick Saban, it is known, I believe by our own Channing Crowder down here in South Florida, that he was once alleged to step over a player who was having a seizure in the Dolphins locker room. That's how much he cared about his player. So great that the man who, uh, 
you know, will will toss out a player and replace him with another player, just like he did with Jalen Hurts and Tua, that he will, you know, move on whatever keeps the Alabama wheel moving. This man who at one point was alleged that he stepped over a player having a seizure on the Dolphins, that's the man who we got to use as the barometer for care. The other thing that's funny about this from Stephen A. Smith is like, you know, if Mike McDaniel was such a rat bastard and so evil, okay, you think that. Well, let's not forget with the other concussion that happened that you're referring to in Green Bay that happened on Christmas where Tua was playing, took a vicious hit on the back of his head, was able to keep playing. Now, he played awful, but no obvious signs of stumbling, no uh, no signs that he was uh, was you know physically impaired. He did play terrible. In fact, I believe that it was the Mike McDaniel who was the one who sent him to the neurologist the next day because as they're reviewing film, Tua couldn't remember why he was making certain decisions. Mike McDaniel, if he was a real rat bastard, could have been like, all right, and just let it go. Eh, Tua will be fine. He didn't have to send him off anywhere. He didn't have to send Tua off to the doctors. If he was a real nefarious bastard, he could have just swept that one under the rug. No one's the wiser. Wasn't diagnosed with a concussion during the game, but instead, he did send Tua to the neurologist, and he was shut down for the season. So, so, this guy that Stephen A. Smith just can't bear the sight of because he expected him to be a better doctor than the doctors and diagnose a back injury as a concussion, um, he doesn't want to hear from him because he thinks he cares about Tua more than Mike McDaniel does, and he thinks that Nick Saban is concerned, and Mike McDaniel isn't. This is Jack Assery. This is a stupid take, and I disagree with it because he contractually has to speak, and it would be a really weird thing if somebody were to say, uh, yeah, Chucky Spars from the Miami Herald, uh, Mike, what, what do you think of Tua? Listen. I, I unfortunately cannot speak on this on Tua anything because Stephen A. Smith has told me to shut the hell up and he doesn't want to hear from me. That would be a weird thing. So I would suggest if you don't want to hear from Mike McDaniel on jiu-jitsu, which is a really random clip to play, on your really, really popular show, don't do it. But you want to go out here and say, oh, pff, Nick Saban, that man cares about Tua more than Mike McDaniel cares about Tua. Even though that seems ridiculous, based on how much care Mike McDaniel has put into Tua and his career and his spirits and his confidence and all of that. It's an unfortunate thing what happened. I'm not dismissing it. It's a very, very unfortunate thing what happened with Tua and the concussions last year. Nobody likes seeing that. Very, very scary. I would imagine amongst the people who were most scared and hurt by it was Mike McDaniel. And to question this man's character is very, very stupid and very low rent.